Hello, welcome to today's The Word in a Flash. I'm Freddie Wilson. Today's subject is Time to Refocus. How has 2020 been treating you? I know we start out year okay, and things got crazy for most of us after that. But it's time for us to refocus on our lives versus the way we're going about doing things now. God wants us to be tuned in to Him, not to what's going on in the world. We may not know what will happen in the next several months, but you can hold on to the fact that if we draw close to God, He'll draw close to us. It's time that you make time with God a daily habit and He can help you refocus. Proverbs 11 and 28 reads, Those who trust in their riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. We are all tempted by the thoughts that if I had a certain thing, a certain car, a certain house, or for that matter, a certain person, our lives would be different, we'd be happier, we'd be content. That's far from the truth. Let me tell you, when those things do come, eventually they won't have as much uh, alluring properties as they once had when you were trying to get them. Uh, it just, things will change, because if you're not grounded in God, those things won't make a long-term difference in your life. Those are temporary fixes to your internal unsteadiness. So yes, it's good to get nice things, but you shouldn't focus on those things. Those things are not what make you happy, because when they do, it's only for a short time, until you need something else to find more happiness from. God created us to be filled by Him, not by the material things that we insist will make our lives better. Proverbs 16 and 3 reads, Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. I did a little research and found out that Proverbs contrast two ways of life. A one is a life spent pursuing riches versus a life grounded in a loving God, and also you need to be given generously. In a in the message, Eugene Patterson paraphrased Proverbs eleven to twenty eight like this: A life devoted to things is a dead life. A stump. A God-shaped life is a flourishing tree. I agree with that. That passage talk about the two ways of life. Uh, one flourishing and fruitful. One hollow and barren. The world insists that material abundance equals the good life. That is not true. In contrast, God invites us to be rooted in Him. To experience His goodness and flourish fruitfully. Um, that's, that's often shaped by our relationship with God. Uh, God reshapes our hearts and desires, tra transforming us from the inside out. What I mean by that is that material things aren't necessarily bad. God wants us to have nice things. It's just sometimes we put our focus too much on those things only to realize that it doesn't bring all the joy and happiness for the time period we need them. So my point to you is, you put your trust in God. God will bless you with those things. But as long as you're grounded in God, then those things aren't the things that you're looking for for your happiness. God is the source of your happiness. But you have to realize that your focus should be on Him, not those things. Romans 12 and 2 reads, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Let me give you an example on how when you focus on God, you do the right things and not being focused on yourself. Uh, just the other day, I was walking out of uh, a local uh, supermarket and there was a couple along with one of the uh, employees trying to get a 65 inch TV to a Honda Civic four door. And many of you can imagine that wasn't going to happen. I couldn't mind my own business, but I walked as I was walking by, uh, God told me to help them. 
because the employee was telling them that he, they can leave the TV there and keep the receipt and they'll hold it to their final way of getting it home. So God told me to go back and help them. I said, Lord, I want to mind my own business, but I said, I'm obedient. I'll go back. Now, I went back and I said, pardon me for interrupting, but how far are you going with the TV? And when they told me, I said, okay, I bring up my SUV and I'm willing to take it to your house. Well, this lady was bringing out some money to help me out. And I said, nope. I said, I don't need any money. I'll take your TV to wherever you're going. So when we got in the car and I followed them all the way to their, their apartment. And when we got there, come to find out, they would have had a hard time getting that TV into the house because their apartment was on the back of the complex. So I even helped the guy take the TV from that car all the way into the house. And I told them they don't owe me anything. And the couple said, the guy said that that's the nicest thing anyone's ever done for him. I said, no problem, because God is like that. God will bless you when you least suspect it. So I didn't do that for me. If me would have walked away and had nothing to do with it. But God told me to help those people. I was just being obedient. So this is what I'm saying, that with that, I'll be blessed. They are blessed. Sometimes God put things in other people to bless you. So in that case, I was their blessing. One day, maybe someone would be my blessing, but I didn't do it for me. I didn't do it in, for some future blessings, for some future help. I did it because I was focused on what God would help me to do. Second thing behind me doing that was God blessed me with something. I'm willing to be a blessing to someone else. Sincerely. Another part of that story I think is important to share with you is, as you know, I'm a black male. And this was a young white couple. And not that it matters to anything, but in all this craziness we're going on in the world, that will go to show that we need each other. You never know from whence your next blessing will come. So quit treating people based on their color or based on their nationality and treat people as God's children as you are. I'm saying all this just to tell you, quit being so focused on yourself. Yes, there's a lot of things going on in the world. But if you put your focus on God, you'll know how to deal with these problems that you've seen in the world. Even if you had direct personal experience with this COVID virus, don't let that deter you from knowing that God will su uh, supply all your needs. No matter how these things go, no matter what state you're living in, God is still in control. Put your focus on Him and you'll be just fine. I want to end this with a prayer I've seen just today. I think it's related to what I'm just talking about. Father, thank you for your good gifts you give. Help me to keep putting my trust in you rather than the stuff of this world. Lord, I hope the people out there are listening to your word. This is not just me talking, Lord. This is word straight from you to them. I pray that they take heed to your will and your word. And with that, be blessed. <laughs>